Matatu will never ever stop for you to enter. Don't give an accent a Kenyan. Which tribe are you coming from? Like. Hey you all, welcome back again to my YouTube channel. My name is Yuriki Dima and today I'm going to be sharing with you things you should avoid doing in Kenya if you really want to survive there. You know you're traveling to go vacay there or you're relocating to that place or you're studying there or you're moving in with hobby or you're just going there for tourism. There are things you should avoid doing in order to have the best experience in Kenya. Kenya. So the first thing you should avoid doing when you get to Kenya is you should avoid speaking the English language to everybody you see in Kenya. This is not because English language is not an official language in Kenya. But you guys, they mostly speak their Swahili language, which is in fact more like their official language than the English language. Not like the English language is not their official language also. The Swahili and the English language are the official languages spoken in Kenya. But the truth is that over 90 or 95 percent of people living in Kenya, in fact the Kenyans, they normally speak the Swahili language. Like it's more like the most like the most used language in Kenya, okay? In fact, in the whole of East Africa, Swahili is more like their official official language, okay? Like you don't get two Kenyans talking or having a conversation and you know it's more like in English language. They do more of their conversations, more of their more of their daily communications in their native language, which is the Swahili language. Across the 46 tribes in Kenya, Swahili is mostly spoken. Okay. In fact, when you speak the English language to a normal Kenyan, okay, on a normal day, like just nothing official, not a professional. You just you just want to have a conversation and you're speaking English. And the person will have the sense that. Oh, this person seems like a foreigner okay that is like they, they embrace the swahili language like it is it is their norm speaking their native language is their norm so if you're traveling to kenya you need to i would advise you have like a little understanding of the swahili language your first one two three four weeks is going to be like easier for you to adapt to these people when you understand a little bit of their native language i beg don't go there and go and be speaking english to them they'll be looking at you like are you are you are you sure enough are you telling you tell us that you're speaking you can speak english so please learn the swahili and i'm not saying you should go and study swahili learn a little bit before you move to kenya or get a tour guide whatever another thing you should avoid in kenya is waiting for a matatu to stop for you hey good don't try it to. Hmm. According to what I heard, Machatos will never, like, let me give you a better example. If you have lived in Lagos, eh, you know how Molu has moved now. It's up, it's up. They need to wait for you. Ojo Legba, Ojo Legba, they are still moving. Onikba, Onikba, they are still moving. Now you go rush, enter. Matatu will never, ever stop for you to enter. Just know that once you sight a Matatu that is going towards your direction, you just speedily hop in. Slowly hopping, but for the matatu to wait for you to enter, don't do it. If I don't go and be, don't go and be waiting. I'll be saying matatu stop, 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 just like we do in some some part of Nigeria. Like you want to uh, go to somewhere, you're trying to board the vehicle, and you just have to flag it down for you to wait for you to enter. It doesn't happen in Kenya. Don't expect a matatu to stop for you for you to be able to enter and be going where you're going. Like like the matatu is more like it's a vehicle that converts people. To where they are going to it's more like buses here in nigeria you understand what i mean okay so do not expect don't have the idea don't even think it don't reason it you get me <laughs> another thing you should avoid like avoid it with the last drop of your blood is <laughs> asking people where they are from in kenya you get for instance you guys i'm going to be using myself as an example okay i actually get questions from a lot of people you know questions like where are you from you don't look Igbo. You're bearing Dima. You don't look Igbo. Are you sure you are Igbo? Is your mom from Yoruba? Is your dad Alsa? Do you understand? People trying to know where I am from. Like, people want to know my tribe. Nigerians do that a lot, okay? They want to know the exact tribe you come from here in Nigeria. Most times, I'm just God. 
how do I even look? People want to know if I'm actually from the Igbo tribe in Nigeria. And they'll be like, you don't look Igbo. You look like Alsa. You look like a Yoruba girl. You look like a, an Edo girl. You don't look Igbo. You don't, don't do it in Kenya. They wouldn't, they, like, they're not comfortable with it, okay? Because there is a lot of stereotypes, you know, about their tribes. Each tribe in Kenya has a kind of a stereotype about their history, about their people, about their culture, about what they eat, you know, there's this kind of stereotypism, you know, about them. And most times they feel bad, they feel awkward about it. So you don't go about asking a Kenyan, which tribe are you coming from? Like, what exactly, what tribe exactly are you from? They feel awkward, like it's, they don't feel comfortable with it. So if you're a Nigerian moving to Kenya, please avoid asking people, where exactly they are from avoid asking them their particular tribe they do not feel comfortable with it in fact they like to see themselves as kenyans okay just because of a lot of beliefs and a lot of controversies about certain tribes they don't just want to you know talk about all the wahala and all of that they just see themselves as kenyans as one people as one tribe as one country they first see themselves as kenyans before they even start talking about oh i'm a, I'm a masai mara or i'm a kikuyu or whatever it is okay whatever tribe it is the person is actually coming from so please if you're visiting kenya do not worry about asking people what tribe are you? What are you from the Maasai tribe? Are you from the Kikuyu tribe? You know, things like that. Please do not do that. Kenyans are not going to find it funny. In fact, they find it, they'll, they'll see you as a rude person. Okay, once you're asking them that kind of question, they just see you as a rude person. You're trying to invade in their privacy and they're not going to feel comfortable about it. So please do not do that once you get to Kenya. Okay? Do not point at things. Do not use your finger to point at things. Like, Kenyans find it, like, they find it disrespectful, okay? They see it as you being rude. They see, like, you, you don't, you don't respect that person enough to belittle the person with you pointing with your finger, okay? If you want to beckon on someone, if you want to indicate something, it's advisable you use your whole hand, like, I don't even know how to do it, but it's very, it's unadvisable for you to indicate something or beckon on anybody with your fingers. Kenyans find it highly disrespectful. So please, once you're going to Kenya, do not do that. Do not do that. In fact, it's, it's better you even know the person's name. You get to know the person's name. So you can actually communicate with the person easily, okay? Other than just pointing to the person or indicating someone with a point of the finger. It doesn't, like, Kenyans don't find it. Don't do it in Kenya, please. Don't do it, okay? You all know that Kenya is home to the big five, right? So when you get to Kenya, there's something I want you to avoid doing. Don't buy things anyhow, especially elephant horns, rhino horns, ivory from the elephant horse. Please do not buy it anyhow. Those things are, you know, the pride of Kenya and the love to preserve them, okay? So don't allow anybody trick you into selling those things illegally to you you might be apprehended if you are found in possession of things like that and you know that they love to preserve the lives of these things so if they catch you with things like this like guy you have you have you've gone a long way to disrespect not just the people but the country as a whole and you have you know committed a crime so please avoid anything that would make you buy parts of these animals illegally do you get me like the ivory from the elephant husk cat height the rhino's horn and so on and so forth avoid them do not be caught in possession of those things those things are sacred pieces they hold those things as valuables like the treasures of their country so never be caught in possession of these things like you're going to be apprehended you're going to be arrested so if you want to have a peaceful perfect beautiful stay in kenya do not allow anybody trick you they'll convince you that oh this is a good possession this is a good have this is a good buy buy it it's going to make you like a big person you know you're going to show it off do not you can go to their conservation centers have fun look at them you know take pictures and just go that is take pictures if you are allowed now that gets me to the next thing do not go about in kenya taking pictures of the people without their permission don't do that mm. 
Mm -hmm. You'll be jailed. You'll be arrested. Nigga, you will be arrested. So please, if you are a tourist, you're traveling to Kenya, you just want to go and vacay there, have all the fun, have all the beautiful memories, please make sure you seek people's permission before you take pictures. Don't go and be carrying phone about us. I'm a content creator. You'll be doing video. They will they won't like it okay it's highly disrespectful in fact you need to have a license from what i heard and what i read up you need to have a license for you to be able to just be taking pictures and all of that you need to be licensed like just like doctors are licensed here in nigeria you need to be licensed in kenya for you to take pictures okay there don't just give out creating content you need to be licensed so i believe like people like miss judy what well, they might have visit Kenya, the Mwango, um, African Tigress. I believe all those people, you know, they are licensed because, yeah, they're always showing us content. So you also need to be licensed if you're a content creator visiting Kenya or if you're just a traveler that wants to go there, have fun and take pictures too. You need to be licensed. Don't just get, mm, they won't like it. They won't like it. Okay. Another thing you need to avoid in Kenya, if you want to have a peaceful, like comfortable, you don't want your body to be hurting you like this in kenya do not go to shopping malls during weekends ah so a kenyan i i was having this conversation with a kenyan on instagram and she was like hmm, during weekends hey <laughs> all the malls are full to the brim like <laughs> full to the brim. it's more like they just everybody yeah come and shop during during weekends like that is the time every kenyan comes to shop so if you want to have a peaceful shopping experience, a peaceful shopping spree, please do not go to shop in malls during weekends in Kenya. Like it's crowdy, rowdy. People are everywhere. You don't feel uncomfortable. And it's more like it's more like a guarantee to theft and robbery and you know, all of that. Okay. So if you want to have like a beautiful shopping experience in Kenya, you want to visit the malls and you just have fun. Do not go during weekends. I don't get borrowed up. Your body will be hot. If you go during weekends, your body will be very extremely hot. Like this, because the crowd is is on another level. I wish you was telling me, I'm like, ah, she is only during weekends that everybody used to come. She really, she now said that it's more like they just ring bell for all the forty six counties. Oh yeah, everybody will be coming out to come and shop. Oh, coming out. So please, if you're a traveler, if you're not in Kenya, like if you're not used to that kind of crowd, eh, shop during weekdays, and then allow the people who are already used to the crowd to shop during weekends. Okay. <laughs> the next thing is that you should never ever refuse security checks in kenya okay not like every other african country kenya is not exempted okay kenya is experiencing a level of insecurity you know the kidnap the whatever the whatever all those bad things okay so it's more like it's um a a must for you to get checked in kenya okay you can randomly get checked in kenya okay by security personnel so please do not refuse to get checked so that you don't implicate yourself more especially most especially when you know that you are free from any form of crime or from any, any form of you know security wahala or security offense do not refuse to get checked okay once you get to a point where you need to get checked allow the security agents to check you and you know give you a pass so you can go these security checks is one of the measures the government is taking to eradicate the kidnap the robbery the insecurity they are experiencing in kenya so please do not refuse to get checked by security officials once you get to kenya do you understand another thing is if you're visiting kenya eh, and you happen to be visiting the central business areas like the business areas in kenya Open your eyes like this. <laughs> your sixth sense should be all it's like you should be you should be active. Be conscious of everybody. Work. And the truth is that Kenyans walk briskly, okay? Like they're always walking fast, 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 fast. So you just need to be very be conscious of where you are, be conscious of who is walking around you, okay? So that you don't get you understand what I'm saying? Okay, you don't even so you don't just start saying, ah, I lost this, I lost that. I don't know how they took this from me. I don't know. 
be conscious of where you are. You need to be conscious. You need to be your eyes need to be open. You need to know. Don't just put put yourself together and just know. Be conscious of where you are. Be conscious of everything you have on yourself. Be conscious of who is walking past you. You need to be security conscious. So don't just go to central business areas in Kenya and you're just oh, and when you person they we they we they we they we they we chop you. <laughs> They will chop you, okay? The last but not the least thing you should avoid doing in Kenya is avoid the lungus. Hey, hey. You see all those up your way, up your way, up your way. Do not go there, especially at night, okay? Especially if you're moving at night. Like, once you're in Kenya like this, say no to shortcuts, especially if you're a new person, like you don't even know your way around. Okay, what are you going to look for in shortcuts? Please explain to me. Explain to me, no, tell me what exactly you're going through a shortcut for. Why? What are you what do you want to go and explore? They are going through shortcuts. Well, they will tell you when you take that shortcut. They will tell you. So once you're in Kenya, avoid the lungos. Okay. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned one or two things from this video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, share it, and drop a comment in the comment section if you're a kenyan and there are other things you want us to avoid when we visit your country please share it with us in the comment section thank you so much for watching i love you all and yes one day i'm going to visit kenya bye, -bye.